In the previous video I did on Fire, we took a look at the basics of using Fire with Live, and we talked about how in order to get the most out of the controller, you really need to use a script or Max for Live device. And so that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So this is gonna get a bit technical, um, that's sort of the point. As I alluded to in the previous video, the communication protocol of the controller is a bit odd. Uh, so for example, the button matrix sends notes, but in order to control the LEDs, you need to send it sysx messages. So the first order of business was creating a script that abstracts away all that complexity, all right? So that when you're developing scripts or Max for Live devices, you don't need to think about low level details like you know what sysx messages you need to send. And that script is sort of a base script. Other scripts can be written on top of it, um, or it could be used standalone uh, with Max for Live. All right, and that's what we're gonna focus on here, sort of the Max for Live side of things, okay? So first, let me just show you what happens when we load the script. So if I go in here to preferences, I'll select the script. Its name right now is just AAA testing, not a, I'm sorry, AAA fire testing, not the greatest name, but it is what it is. Um, and you can see uh, it turns off all the LEDs and initializes the controller so that it's ready to be used in Max for Live. All right, I've got a demo patch here, which I'll load up. And this demonstrates uh, the way the script works. And it also includes a bunch of reusable components so that you can just immediately get up and running with this guy. Okay, so let's take a look at what this patch does and how it's laid out. For the most part, most of this stuff is generic. It'll work with any control surface script that has a Max for Live interface. There's only a couple pieces of it that are specific to Fire. Okay, so starting up here on the left, we have uh, this JavaScript, and this is the only JavaScript in the toolkit. Uh, this is going to uh, locate a script of a given name, in this case, AAA Fire Testing, and it can optionally grab the controls of the script. So that's what this one here indicates. All right, if we're doing a grab, uh, the IDs and names of all the controls will be set out the third outlet, and then out the fourth outlet, we'll get a bang once the grab is complete. And that's useful because you don't want to be sending LED values while controls are in the process of being grabbed. Throughout the rest of the patch, we have abstractions for working with controls, and these are really simple. Here's, uh, let me give you an example of one. You could really roll your own, but I just you know, wanted to make things a little bit easier, so I've created these and documented them so they're easy to use. At any rate, with a control, uh, that's meant for use with any single control, like a button or encoder. We can observe its value, and we can send it values, okay? And we have abstractions for all the various control types. Here's one for one of the display lines. And again, these are very simple. The heavy lifting is actually occurring in the script. Okay, and then throughout this patch, we have uh, a few different interaction demos, and we'll go through and look at each one of those individually. Uh, so the first one we have here uh, is going to work with display the first display line, display line zero, and it's going to write local demo. All right, it's very simple there. Um, let me just give you a couple more examples of what we can do with this abstraction. I could write anything to the display, like hello, for example, and now that'll be written. Okay, when anytime you're writing text to the display, you can also center it. So this will center that text. Okay, now let me go back to this text. Now, each display line has actually two layers of text that it can show. It has what's called the static text, that's local demo, and then it has a momentary or overlay text. This is text that is only gonna be shown momentarily. So let me write hello to the momentary line. Okay, I can switch back to the static text by sending a bang into this inlet here that'll revert back to the static text. Okay, so to show you that again, we can uh, show some momentary text and then revert back to the static text. All right, we can also auto revert. Let me show you that here. And uh, this will show the momentary text for a couple of seconds and then revert back to the default text. I'm sorry, the static text. Okay, uh, this last inlet uh, can reset the display line. So that'll just clear it out. Okay. And all three display lines work in the same way. All right. Now let's look at this guy here. Okay, so this is using two controls, the mode button and the mode LED control. Even though these look like they're uh, connected on the controller itself, they're not. Um, so this is simply connecting them. So every time I press the mode button, it's going to cycle through those LEDs. Very simple. Okay. Over here, we have uh, an example of working with a control, the play button in this case. On load, it's going to set... Uh, the play button to its primary dim color, which is green dim. All right, now with all controls that have LEDs, we have two ways of setting the LEDs, the LEDs color. All right, we could do it with straight up MIDI values like 64, for example, set that to the second inlet. All right, and now we get amber, okay? Personally, I don't like doing that. I mean, you can, there are use cases for that, but I prefer to use symbolic color names and that's what we have here, multicolors primary dim. And as far as LEDs go, the matrix is RGB, and we'll look at that in a second. 
All the other buttons, though, are either single colored or multicolored. The play button is multicolored. That means it could it display two different colors. Uh, I could do a primary color, green in this case, and a secondary color. So aside from those two colors, there's also different states uh, that the LED can show. So let me just turn this off. And now every time I press the play button, it's going to cycle to the next state. So we got a primary full, primary dim, primary blink, and that's blinking in sync with live's tempo. Then we've got secondary, secondary dim, and then secondary blink. Okay, so that's an example of using symbolic color names, which again, I think is, is a little bit easier rather than having to memorize, you know, that value 64 equates to the LED color amber. I just think this is easier to use this way. Okay, uh, this interaction here, uh, very simple. It's using the mute solo matrix, that's this, and the mute solo LED matrix, that's these LEDs to the right. And uh, when I press one of these buttons, it's gonna light up and it'll also light the LED next to it, very simple. Okay, now this interaction over here uses the stop button and the button matrix. Okay, on load, it's going to set the uh, stop button to its dim color. The stop button, by the way, just has a single colored LED. And then it'll also uh, initialize the matrix. And these are the colors it initializes it with. Uh, it sets the first and last rows to white dim, as well as the first and last columns. Okay, now the matrix is a special case because in addition to MIDI values and symbolic color names, you can also set colors via RGB values. And that's what's happening here. This little patcher here is taking in a column and row value as well as a velocity and turning those into an RGB value. All right, so uh, the result of that is that we get this sort of spectrum across the controller. Okay, and pressing the stop button will revert back to the default. All right. And then the last interaction here uh, uses the main encoder matrix, these four encoders, uh, main encoder touch matrix, that's the uh, touch aspect of those encoders, and then the bottom two display lines. By default, that's gonna show turn N encoder on the bottom two lines. And anytime we interact with the controller, it'll display the encoder's name as well as what's happening with it. So touch, increase, decrease, release. Okay, and that works with any of the encoders. And you can see we're also using auto revert here, so it'll revert back to the static text uh, once we stop manipulating encoder for a couple of seconds. So I'm hoping that gave you an idea of how easy it is to work with the controller once we have all the complexity of its protocol abstracted away. Uh, let me give you a more real world example here. We're just gonna delete all this stuff out. Let me just save this as a new patch actually. I'll save it on my desktop. Okay, yes, I wanna delete that, okay. So what we'll do is we'll set up a, uh, a simple uh, play and stop button so we can control live's transport okay so for that we're going to use cs element control and we're going to set up play button is the first one okay we'll need to initialize this guy oops i'm not sure why i did that okay and then we want uh to start playing we want live to start playing when we when we press the button so we use cell 127 there all right, and then the value we need to send to start live playing back is gonna be one. Okay, so there's one button. We'll just copy this and then set the same thing up for the stop button. Okay, but the value we need to send there is gonna be zero. Okay, so our buttons are all ready to go. Now let's set up the uh, live API portion of it. So live path, sorry, and the path we want is live set and we use live property property we want is is playing and we want to observe that okay so let's connect that okay and then we'll initialize that on load and then we'll connect our button outs button outputs to that and now we'll initialize this whole guy now you can see if we go into live we now have control over transport okay now let's get the leds working so uh this outlet right here is going to send out the value so we could just put that into the second inlet of both of these and now you can see that when live is playing back they'll both light up and both turn off when live stops we might not want that we might want the leds to be inverted so maybe uh, we'll invert the play button here i'm sorry the stop button okay and now that'll be inverted sorry okay uh, another thing we might want to do is that right now uh, when live is playing back uh, the LED is dim green we might want that to flash um, so we can do that simply use a cell object here we'll delete this okay and if the value oh, if the value is not damn it if 
All right, so if the value is one, we want to send a special color, and that's going to be multicolors. Shoot. Sorry, multicolors primary blank. Okay, and now let's see that. All right, so when it's playing back, it'll blank. So as you can see, this is very easy and quick to work with. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this toolkit yet. Um, I just wanted to get a gauge on interest. So if you are interested, uh, drop a line in the comments and let me know, and uh, we'll see what we can do.